Now, I feel as if I'm close to the end of making zombies videos. I've got round 100 on every World at War, Black Ops 1, Black Ops 2, and Black Ops 3 map, and truthfully, I was never going to do Black Ops 4. From an outside perspective, the high rounds seemed cheap and easy with no real diversity. But of course, this wasn't based off my experience, but hearsay from the community. After getting round 100 on all 8 zombies maps, I can say that Black Ops 4 has some of the worst high rounds I have ever played, but also some really solid and enjoyable high rounds. Where Black Ops 4 really shines are the incredible easter eggs, some of which were only found this year, and mostly all of these benefit the player to a large degree when dealing with these high rounds. Also, I enjoyed the perk system. I was never a fan, but that's because I never really gave it a chance or really took the time to learn. But as a result, nearly every map has a different perk layout and specialist resulting in more individualized strategies, the complete opposite of my expectation. Just when you think you've seen all there is to zombies, something always catches the corner of your eye. Voyage of Despair. It is hard to deny how cinematic and beautiful this map is, and our journey to round 100 for the most part encapsulates this. Firstly, I activate the Sentinel Artifact and then activate the four Pack-a-Punch pedestals. It may be surprising, but it's very important that I do the Clock Easter egg, where I am given a symbol and match it to a time, and then place the times on these wheels. With this done at round 9, I can do one of the most bizarre Easter eggs in Zombies history, only being found 6 months ago. You have to stand in this corner, holding down Interact, wait 1 second, then start moving Moving, while still interacting and crouched and walk this exact path that I do. And you do have to be very accurate, otherwise it will fail. But once you are at this point, you knife twice, stand up and then switch weapons. And if done correctly, you will be given the Kraken and the Homunculus. I honestly couldn't believe this worked because it's just so bizarre and it reminds me of a mystery box troll video. Moving on though, I use my shield to hit this device off a safe, pick it up and place it on another safe. The device gives me a number and now I I need to find a piece of a skeleton which corresponds to the number and then place it in the safe or should I say portal I need to place some more bones in three more safes and now I can interact with the skeleton driving a car and it goes downwards teleporting into the sky and flying around the map dropping power-ups a very pretty easter egg but there's even more now you can actually get into the car if you do the kraken easter egg again and boom we're riding shotgun this easter egg so cool that it doesn't even help the high rounds I literally just did it for the sake of how cool it is. Now, you may be wondering how I have the elemental kraken in my hands. Well, earlier I took out a lightning catalyst, specifically with the kraken giving me concentrated radiance. And now after building this device, I can upgrade my kraken with the lightning variant, the best of the four. At round 23, I got a sniper out of the mystery box, allowing me to shoot fish around the map and then collect these fish. With a total of six fish collected, I can then place them on this wood and a tentacle will give me a free perk. I got quick revive, which increases healing time so a pretty handy perk i then got the hellion packer punched it and now i'm all set to go it's probably important to note i am using phd to prevent splash damage dying wish as it gives you a lot more chances stronghold for the extra health when camping and bandolier bandit in my modifier so i don't have to reload as often and i have more ammo the high rounds are however relatively simple you camp at the bottom of the grand staircase in this corner here and simply use your specialist when available and the rest of the time use the hellion and the kraken the the biggest issue on this map, however, is ammo, and I nearly failed because of this. But mainly because I'm a bit of a noob when it comes to Black Ops 4. I accidentally put on the Poison Catalyst upgrade on my Kraken at round 91, and as you can see, it just isn't as good. Luckily, I was able to escape and eventually take out a Lightning Catalyst, picked up its concentrated radiance, and replaced the Poison, also giving me back full ammo. I would begin to run out of ammo a lot in the 90s, especially because there's no dog rounds, but the portals on the map work perfectly for the strategy. I simply use this portal, get more ammo, run back down under, and then use this portal and boom, I'm back to the camping site. And so just like that, I got round 100 on Voyage of Despair. I did try and jump off the boat and I'm disappointed it didn't allow me. So instead I called Mr. Skeleton back on the map and then tried to hop back in the car, but unfortunately I was taken out. It took me five and a half hours to get to round 100 and I took down 32,000 zombies. Nine, another map I can't help but admire from a visual and theme standpoint. However, our journey to round 100 is actually quite a difficult one. Making this gladiator arena and temple 
for the perfect setting. I do want to quickly mention because I haven't already, I am only using classic gobble gums in this video. So firstly, I cut this rope revealing my challenge banner, and it's very important that I do make my way through these challenges. My first reward is a heart, which grants me an extra life, which comes in massively later on. I'm using the Chakrams of Vengeance, one of the more visually pleasing specialists, and using it, I get my third reward, which is the Pack-a-Punch Strife. I can now easily take out every champion, collect their heads, and create the Pack-a-Punch Portal. I collect a mug, a sword, and a helmet, and can place them on this corpse, throw a Wraith Grenade from the Zeus area into the Odin, landing on the corpse and lighting it up. After seven rounds, I get a random perk as a reward. That being Zomshell, which is not what I wanted, but I guess when there's 17 perks, not counting secret sauce, I can't really get my hopes up. I then build the acid trap and using it, I need to take out the four different types of catalyst zombies and also a tiger. And then slide under the acid trap whilst active and the roller trap. And now whenever I run through fire, I do not take any damage, which obviously makes a massive difference when training in this first room. I got blaze phase as my second free perk. If you crouch for a certain amount of time, you can then do a dash that will go through enemies in a blaze of fire. I did get the Hellion at round 30, pack a punch it, and for the early rounds camped in the flooded crypt with this and this door closed. However, I'm not running camping perks, so instead I end up mainly training the zombies in this area with my shield out because I'm using Victorious Tortoise and also stamina up in my modifier, allowing me to have infinite sprint and also shoot while sprinting. This strategy is only bearable till the zombies begin to sprint and then it becomes way too hard so I started to train these zombies back in the gladiator arena. This is easy but I found it very very frustrating as it is rare the zombies will group up evenly mainly due to the frequent bosses, tigers and catalyst zombies making this whole situation a nightmare for your ammo and also I had to run all the way down to the temple to get a new shield and I had to do this what it felt like every two minutes. So this is where my time slip comes into play. It increases the speed at which traps recharge and so now I can do a new strategy. I use the acid trap, run into the Ra area, use the roller trap, which is a very bad trap by the way, as the bosses switch it off when they run through it, resulting in it rarely ever getting any kills. And then to end, I use a Wraith Grenade, and usually at this point I need to buy a new shield already. This strategy frustrated me so much, I decided to go back down to the Flooded Crypt, which was a lot more fun, especially due to stamina, up. but the spawns are so fast down here that even the track rooms couldn't deal with the zombies. Out of every Black Ops 4 map, I failed this the most, and I was trying a bunch of different perk strategies, but in the end, I went with the old reliable camping perks, Dying Wish, Bandolier, PhD, and Stronghold in my modifier so I replenished armor and did more damage when camping. I also got Blood Wolf Bite, which spawns a friendly dire wolf named Luna, making a huge difference when it comes to getting round 100. And Luna will come in later on other maps, but in my modifier position. It's a pretty cool perk. I got the Alien, of course, camped in the crypts, this time with the Viper and Dragon. And again, my main issue was ammo, especially in the 90s. The way I did combat this was to leave the max ammo reward until I needed it, and then continue doing challenges afterwards until I got the second max ammo reward. In doing so, I did drop my pistols for the scorpion to do a challenge and when I got an insta kill I tried to use the charge shot to save ammo and it went horribly wrong and I went down. Fortunately the two perks I was left with after going down was PhD and stronghold allowing me to survive and get my specialist back to leave and set myself back up. At round 99 I did run out of ammo again and collected the max ammo reward so at this point I was very confident I had this difficult map completed but I was wrong. Going down on round 99 happens way too often in this video as you We'll see later on. However, I did manage to escape only to go down again. The zombies on this game are cracked out of their minds. And this would have been game over if it wasn't for the heart we collected at the start of the map. Still surviving, I trained these zombies up and got very lucky to get all my perks back. But even then, I got very, very close to failing again, being one single hit away from failing, but my shield blocked it and the zombies then became distracted. This did happen to be the last zombies in the round and so that's how I got round 100 on nine and i often hear people saying this map is easy and it definitely is for the first 60 rounds but once these super sprinters come in paired with all the bosses and catalyst zombies it becomes a tricky map round 100 took three and a half hours and i took out 23,000 zombie fired beings Today's video is sponsored by HelloFresh. I've mentioned I've been trying to get fit and healthy for a future marathon, and HelloFresh is a great product if you are trying to stay organized, fit, and intake a nutritional diet to fuel your life. Another great benefit of HelloFresh is the price. It's 25% cheaper than takeout and cheaper than grocery shopping. Due to HelloFresh's pre-portioned ingredients, 
you are able to cut down on at least 23% of waste from grocery shopping, saving you money and being better for the environment. And if you're looking for a variety in your meals, HelloFresh keeps your taste buds on their toes with 40 recipes and over 100 seasonal and convenience items to choose from each week. With so much variety, there are options for everyone and every lifestyle. And no worries if you're not a pro in the kitchen, HelloFresh's foolproof recipes arrive pre-proportioned and easy to prepare in just a few steps. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGSAM AUG50 for 50% off plus free shipping. Click the link in the description or scan the QR code with your phone. Blood of the Dead. When I said I go down a lot on round 99, I really meant it. So how hard is the map with one of the most difficult easter eggs in zombies history? Well it turns out, not very. Firstly I turn on the power, slice my way through the catwalk creating a path of sorrow. This is possibly the most enjoyable specialist when upgraded. I get the second power on, and for this game the perks are coincidentally very similar to 9 except time slip is the modifier allowing me to get the path of sorrows back quicker. It's very important that I do build this shield here and leave this door closed. I need to collect some spirits so I can blast this switch making the spirit spawn in and bring the pack a punch machine into our world. I get the blunder gap from the box, place it in this fireplace, collect zombie souls till the three skulls light up blue then take the blunder gap from the fire and replenish the blue flame at the end of the weapon as I make my way to new industries and place it in this machine. The spirits then help you forge the magmas and now I'm all set up. The high round strategy is simple, you activate this trap and sit in a corner and no zombies will attack you. Then when the trap ends, pull out the shield, run up to the other end of the building and do a loop and then go across, shoot the magmas, distracting the zombies for a second and then hit the trap again, then rinse and repeat. The trap does charge really fast because of time slip. When my shield was low, I would whip out my blade and slice my way to get my shield back and also just to have some fun with it. At the end of the specialist life, I would hit the trap and so you can see this is a pretty easy map, all thanks to this utterly over power trap paired with time slip. The round 99 curse must be strong if it happens on Blood of the Dead, but fortunately I ended up getting a dog round at 99, making it hard for me to choke, and so that is how I got round 100 on Blood of the Dead. A map that's both very easy and hard at the same time. It took me four and a half hours and I got only 6,000 kills. Classified. One of the easiest and most consistent, yet absolutely boring and tedious round 100 strategies I have ever witnessed is on Classified. And you guys know I love zombies, so for me to say this, it must really be bad. So I tried to get to round 100 in a much faster and enjoyable manner, trying to put some more life into this map. As if you guys saw my latest video, I ranked this map very low when ranking every single map in zombies history. And to be honest, even after 100 rounds, I still stand and by the ranking. So the first thing I do with this more enjoyable journey to round 100 is take both lifts downwards and get the bowie knife just so I can get some extra points quick. I get my perks which are the standard camping ones and now I can kind of start the strategy by camping in the elevator and slowly leveling up my death machine. I was very fortunate this game as I got the hellion and the winter's howl out of the first box spawn. The winter's howl is actually really good on this map. And then build the teleporter signal amplifier, pick it up and place it on this portal. I activate the defcon switches and now i can travel to the pack a punch area that we all remember from moon of course except this version has a bunch of stuff around that will eventually go away if you stay in this area but for this game i just upgraded my weapons and teleported back now this high round strategy becomes insane when the zombies start sprinting and yes it is very similar to other black ops 4 maps where you use the hellion your specialist when you have it and then whatever wonder weapon is on the map which happens to be the winter's howl i will say the strategy was actually a bit of fun though just based of how ridiculously fast it is. With all this said, this strategy is so fast that it becomes very, very difficult. And in the end, I got caught out trying to reload and ended up going down, resulting in a loss of PhD from which I ended up downing myself. Now, I got somewhat close to round 100, so I thought I may as well show you guys the other strategy, whilst pretty much guaranteeing round 100 the next game for myself. But sadly, and I do feel as if this happens a lot, especially on this map and doing this strategy, I lost connection to the servers. To show how simple this strategy is, all you need is to get your perks. I was running Winter's Whale, Victorious Tortoise, Stronghold, and Time Slip in the modifier to get my specialist quick, which is very important. And from here, all you need is a shield. So really all you need are perks and a shield and then run the Ragnarok specialist and then simply camp next to the shield bench. The zombies won't be able to hit you when you have your shield out because of Victorious Tortoise. And so you can just easily kill the zombies with the Wraith Grenades and the shield's weapon. And when the shield breaks, simply just buy a new one as you're standing right on the buildable and continue doing this until you get your 
specialist, then place the Ragnaroks down and boom, you'll get round 100 so ridiculously easy as long as you don't lose connection to the servers. So that is how I got round 100 and classified, a map that just isn't for me as it's not how I like to play zombies. It took me just under 4 hours and just under 26,000 zombies to complete classified. Dead of the Night. I'd imagine most people watching this don't know about the absolutely insane newly found easter egg on this map. Heck, I didn't know about it either until the YouTuber Jolts told me about it. Also, just a big shout out to Jolts, he helped me a lot basically being my coach when getting through these maps. He does make some very good zombies content, so check him out. The reward for this easter egg is absolutely insane. You get given infinite ammo with whatever gun you're holding at the time, and also homunculus and two free perks. I can't think of a single reward in zombies as insane as when you complete this, but it comes at a price. It is a very weird and confusing easter egg to complete, and so I'm going to try my best to cover my new favorite easter egg in the entirety of zombies. So firstly, I activate the sentinel artifact, and now we are already starting the first step, which is a weird one. You need to note down the order at which you open these six doors. They are the main six doors in the mansion. Once completed, I can then look at six different gramophones around the map. If you look at it for a second, the game just registers this and remembers it, and so I need to make sure I note down the order at which I looked at them. Now, it's very important that when I finish this easter egg, I'm holding the Alistair's Annihilator, so I have infinite ammo with the double upgraded wonder weapon. So firstly, I need to actually get some steps done. For example, this clock step, where I have to stand in the middle of a circle until the time hits 12, and then I get given a tuning fork. I need three of these, and so my second one comes when I interact with this painting, follow this visible ghost, until it breaks open my second fork. At this stage, I build the Alistair's Folly, build the silver bullets, hit this bookshelf with my shield, revealing a secret door and part. It's very crucial, I also buy the M1897 and put silver bullets in it. And now I can go to the Odin statue, and as soon as I get here, a lockdown begins where vampires come and attack. This is why I got the Alistair's Folly, because these vampires can be quite difficult. Once completed, I get my third and final tuning fork, and now I can remove the Prima Materia and open the gate, from which a werewolf comes to attack. I have to make sure I take him out with the silver bullets on my shotgun, as this will make him drop some chaos material. This paired with the secret part we got before upgrades the Alistair's Folly to the Chaos Theory, allowing us to shoot charged shots, but having only two different variations, the Whirlwind and the Acid Shot that confuses the zombies. To upgrade the Wonder Weapon further, I direct impact a zombie with the Acid Shot as it stands over a dig site from which he digs up a part for us. I will quickly mention that I put Winter's Whale in my modifier so I can do this, basically just giving myself some space and time to do some of these difficult easter egg steps, from which you'll see soon. The next step I do need to do is shoot a lantern that is glowing a different colour to the rest of the lanterns, and then continue doing so as more lanterns light up with this effect. Once I shoot all four, a bat will spawn, and I quickly pre-fire it so it won't escape with the next part that I need. Now I just need to kill a few vampires, pick up their bile, and summon the red, more powerful vampire. He is easily taken out by the whirlwind, and so I can pick up the last part to build Alistair's Annihilator. This is where things become weird, as now I am back to doing the newly solved easter egg. You need to pack the M1897 and break six different vases by shooting precisely into the vase with the projectile that it shoots out, as now the weapon becomes an explosive. And you have to do this in the order at which you open the main doors at the start, as each vase corresponds to one of those doors. I found this step weirdly enjoyable and satisfying, as sometimes the projectiles rebound into the vase. Do you know if I have completed the step correctly, I check this candle, and as it is currently unlit, I know I have done it successfully. And now I need to light these candles back up with the wraith fires. And again, it has to be done in a certain order. This time in the reverse order from which I open the doors. So yes, each candle represents a door, and I need to light them in the reverse order that I open the doors. The candles remained lit after I had done so, so I knew I did it correctly. Now I can move on and pick up this vinyl record and put it into the six gramophones that I looked at at the start of the map. But I have to put the records into the gramophones in the reverse order from which I looked at them. All of these steps were weird but simple enough, but now comes the most difficult one. You have to stand by the forest exit and you will hear a ghost very, very faintly.
And I might add, to the point from which I was having trouble hearing it, so I wasn't even sure I was next to the ghost. Because yes, this ghost is completely invisible, not like the other visible ghosts that are on this map. I was having a lot of trouble with this step, but I was very thankful I took in Winter's Whale as it allowed me a bit more time and space to hear. There is a lot of guesswork involved in this, and with this said, I did lose the ghost for quite some time, but I ended up finding him again and bringing him down to the cellar, but for for some reason the ghost doesn't move down here unless you lay down and this is where I began to have issues. For some reason I couldn't get the easter egg to work but then I finally figured out you have to look in this exact location and then the jump scare will occur and the easter egg will be completed. I got Time Slip and Mule Kick as my two free perks, the Homunculus taking my Wraith Fire position, but the main and completely overpowered reward was the Infinite Ammo on Alistair's Annihilator. I love this easter egg so much because it does feel so secretive, like we were never meant to find it. And so this added with it being slightly difficult and the rewards being insane is exactly what I love to see when it comes to zombie easter eggs, especially because it affects the high rounds and you guys know I love high rounds. And with some wonder weapons it might become boring, but but I love using this wonder weapon. So it was the perfect map for this Easter egg. As you can see, the strategy is to camp in this corner in the master bedroom using just Alistair's Annihilator and the Hammer of Valhalla, which is absolutely insane when level three. For the most part, I've used a different specialist on all five maps so far. And to be fair, the specialists are a lot of fun. And I don't really hear people mention this about Black Ops 4. I did forget to mention that this wonder weapon is fully upgraded and now I can shoot a small fireball, which is probably the safest variation of all of these charge shots, especially when the zombies begin to sprint. I can also shoot a green portal on the ground, shrinking the zombies out of existence. This is the best of the four variations, and by far the most satisfying to watch, as it takes out the zombies ridiculously fast. To speed up the rounds, I would consistently cycle through the different charges until I got the green portal again, and I would always make sure the acid charge shot would disappear near straight away, as it was very slow at killing the zombies. So that is how I got round 100 on Dead of the Night. Out of the five maps I've shown so far, this map was the most enjoyable, mainly due to this wicked easter egg that went unfound for such a long time. It took me 4 hours and 20 minutes and I took out 32,000 zombies. Ancient Evil, my favourite map when it comes to Black Ops 4 Zombies and a map that I ranked very high on my zombies list and would even consider moving higher now that I have made my journey to round 100. I firstly rampaged through these zombies and unusually I decided to hit the box right away and I ended up getting the Hellion, which you may have noticed I nearly always get as my secondary to whatever wonder weapon is on the map. It's not really needed for this map, but hey, I'll take the Hellion any day of the week. I then activate the Sentinel Artifact and a lockdown occurs with the the evil Perseus from which Pegasus comes to save the day. The Sentinel Artifact is now activated and now I can grab the Golden Bridle to rein Pegasus to the Pack-a-Punch Machine. But firstly, a Union Nest spawns in. This guy is wicked looking and I'm just thankful that I had the Hellion for this. The Union Nest also drops a part of the shield, the shield being very important on this map for what I'm going to do. And again, this may be an easter egg that not so many people know of, but I could be wrong. I can now pick up this Dormant Hand and ride Pegasus to the Pipe and pass, placing the dormant hand to begin the initiation of Charon. Now through this video, I am going to pronounce it the hand of Charon, but in America, I think it's the hand of Karen, and in Greek, it's the hand of Haron. But I'm from Australia, and we typically follow the British way of pronouncing words. I have to simply survive in the circle, and then I get given Charon's fallen hand, which is epic, as I've mentioned many times. I can't get over how epic these hands are, and from a first glance, I thought Charon's would be the worst, because the others are so good initially, but Charon's hand for the high rounds goes a very long way. I then free two of the Zeus birds who begin to break down these big crystals with lightning, revealing Pack-a-Punch. Considering how easy it is to build, the Pegasus Strike is an incredibly overpowered buildable. It will take my Ray Fire position, but it's well worth it and honestly really cool, which will spawn Pegasus above me and I might add for a very long time and he will just wipe out these zombies with ease. Completely overpowered for a simple buildable. With the Fallen Hand of Charon, I then force zombies down into the River of Sorrow and after the river has taken its once, it glows red and I can drink from it, which stops me from being able to heal, so I do have to be very careful, but it also grants me the power to see opals around the map, which are ancient Greek coins. 
I need three real obols, and now I can give them to the altar, which then spawns a portal, proving myself to Charon by surviving hordes of zombies on Shadow's Bank. This is, of course, very easy because now I have the redeemed hand of Charon, which can do charge shots, releasing a blood magic, distracting and taking all the zombies that even come close to it down to the underworld. Now that I have proved myself to Charon, I keep the redeemed hand. I might add it looks bloody cool, but I'm not done upgrading Charon's hand yet. Yet, there's a way to make his hand even stronger. Firstly, I needed to do some challenges from the Oracle, as when I'm rewarded for doing these challenges, a fire gets bigger and bigger until I can shove my spear in there and it will catch a light. Then throw the spear over this bowl, and if done correctly, it will also catch a light. Now I need to take out the lightning catalyst in the circle at Himera, a poison at Charon, a fire at Gaia, and water at Uranus. I do make sure my Hellion is upgraded and take out 10 or so more zombies as a sacrifice to each of Alter. Once all of this is completed, I can go to the pack punch machine and you will notice the gods have challenged me. The first goddess being Gaia. For this challenge, I put the Pegasus strike down as I need to conserve ammo as these Catalyst zombies are both strong and numerous. It does take a little while, but once completed, I can accept Uranus's challenge where a bunch of skeleton zombies spawn. These guys are really strong, so I just used my hand and stood within the blood magic that I did spray on the ground. Three bosses spawn in for the Hirama challenge. It was relatively simple for me with the Hellion and then Charon's challenge spawns in three Blight Fathers, which I absolutely smash with the Viper Dragon, probably the strongest specialist in the whole of Black Ops 4 with the Path of Sorrows being the most enjoyable to use. After beating the Gods and Goddesses challenges, I can now pack a punch Charon's hand to get the Exalted Hand of Charon, which gives 10 extra bits of blood magic and boosts the charge shot from lasting 23 whole seconds compared to only 15 seconds on the Redeemed Hand of Charon. So a charge shot lasts eight seconds longer, which when added up makes a massive deal. I am all set up now, but it is very important to mention I am using Blood Wolf Bite in the modifier as Luna drops little power-ups. And this goes a long way for ammo as Charon's hand does not drop power-ups. And one of Luna's little max ammos fills Charon's hand back to 50 every single time. I did decide to use the Hellion in the early rounds as it is faster, but past round 50, it becomes near impossible to use the Hellion in this position without going down as the spawns are just ridiculously fast here. As you've heard a few times now on Black Ops 4, it's even risky to use the Viper and Dragon on this map, and the only real way to use it is by shooting in this direction, which will kill the zombies from your side also. But the most important detail is to use the level 3 upgrade, the Viper Bite, which creates a small whirlwind dealing damage, but most importantly, distracting the zombies for a second, allowing you to charge your exalted hand. If you don't unleash the Viper's Bite, it is inevitable you will go down, as I did a few times before learning the strategy. Another thing to note is the Pegasus Strike does take a while to place down, and so I would usually use it at the start of a round or when Charon's blood magic is on the ground. But you do have a chance of the game crashing when using Pegasus, as happened to my game, which honestly makes sense considering how much stuff is happening on this map at once. Sometimes it can be slightly difficult to notice when the blood magic stops being potent, and as a result, I got bodied by the zombies. Fortunately, on this game, Game, the zombies stand back from your body when you go down. So I had a moment to quickly call in Pegasus. And to be honest, this strategy is very safe even without any perks because of the exalted hand, as long as you're not stingy with your ammo. And that's the whole reason why I went down. I know it may seem like a brain dead strategy because the hand of Charon is just so strong. But for me, it works really well as I found it satisfying due to the animation of the zombies going to the underworld. And also just the sheer speed and intensity of the zombies on Black Ops 4 to make the most boring strategies somewhat fun, except of course on classified, because using a shield with a little pistol to get to round 100 I find very lame. But it wouldn't be a journey to round 100 without a fail on 99. Well thankfully here I did have Dying Wish and also I got a nuke which cleared out all these zombies, so I didn't technically go down and I had some space and time to recover. So that is how I got round 100 on Ancient Evil, a map that I'd never heard of six months ago but have come to really admire. I completed it in just under four hours and it took 32,000 zombies to the underworld.
Alpha Omega. In the entirety of Zombies, this may be the weirdest journey to round 100. I honestly went into this thinking it was going to be very unenjoyable, but I was pleasantly surprised. Now granted, I don't hold this map as an all time great by any means, but rather just some good fun as Zombies ought to be. I've also always considered Alpha Omega as an outright ugly map, but the scenery on this round 100 has now given me some more appreciation. Firstly, of course, I get the power on, begin to level up my specialist, which is overkill this game and begin to hit the box from which I got the ray gun mark 2 and the ballistic knife on the very first box location. This is insane considering I heard the hardest part of this entire strategy is getting the ballistic knife in the first place. Inferring that yes this map is easy but don't worry I always seem to make simple things hard on round 99. Alpha Omega has one of the weirder strategies mainly due to the Black Ops 4 perk system. On this map I grab Ethereal Razor. This allows me to deal damage to multiple zombies at once when meleeing with an offhand swipe instead of a lunge. I also get electric burst which of course stuns zombies just like electric cherry when reloading but I also made sure it was in my modified position giving me an electric charge on my melee for a short period of time. So all you need is the ballistic knife and perks and then come to the backyard of the yellow house making sure you don't open this and this door and all these zombies will spawn over in this location from which you can just absolutely destroy them with the overkill. But the main and quite clever part of the strategy is to make sure you are in this corner so the zombies have to jump up giving you time to knife them. I did make sure that whenever the charge on my electric burst disappeared I would shoot the ballistic knife on the wood under me. This would do two things. Firstly by reloading it resets the charge on my knife and secondly it grants myself infinite ammo as I collect the knife on the wood. Thus these perks make the ballistic knife essentially a wonder weapon and I guess it's just lucky there's a spot on this map such as in this backyard where these zombies have to jump up creating the perfect storm for this newly formed wonder weapon. But it wouldn't be another segment on this video without a fail at 99. And I promise I was not purposely going down on 99. There is no way I would submit myself to self-torture. I just genuinely am a choke artist when it comes to, well, life in general. The main reason behind this fail was I activated Arsenal Accelerator to try and speed up the round. And I guess I panicked because I didn't realize it was going to take so long to drink. I was too lazy to build the shield earlier. And as a result, this happened. I did manage to free myself from the zombies, only to go down. And realistically, I probably should have failed at this moment because I forgot the modifier doesn't work when you lose perks. But luckily, the zombies just slap the crap out of you on this game and don't pull you in like on World at War. And so I was able to survive, get my perks back, only for me to get an inch away from failing. Having a shield on Black Ops 4 is necessary with these sprinter zombies. I did manage to make my way into the backyard and up the stairs, and fortunately, zombies half to the jump up spot. So that is how I got round 100 on Alpha Omega, a map that may look quite stupid when dealing with high rounds, but trust me, it's actually kind of fun. I got a dog round on 100, taking me to 101. And so Alpha Omega took four hours and 45 minutes and I got 24,000 kills. Tag to Totem. Everybody knows that World of War Shidonuma is the easiest map in Zombies history, but I'd say Tag may be the easiest in terms of pure strategy. Unlike Alpha Omega, Tag is un undoubtedly beautiful, but even so, I rank this as my least favorite map in Zombies if you take out Vanguard and some survival maps. And I'm not saying it's a bad map, I just don't think it's a good one, and the high rounds confirm this. However, I still enjoyed myself and it's definitely more fun than Classified, which I've consistently degraded throughout this entire video, so hopefully you aren't a massive fan of Classified, because that would be rough. Firstly, I get on all three power switches on this map, grab some snowballs and go around the map through throwing them at these different targets. And when completed, I am given the Tundra Gun as a reward, a weapon that I will admit I didn't know existed. So pretty cool Easter egg, and this Tundra Gun is very good and definitely suits the theme of the map. I waited until the lighthouse was pointing in this direction, and now I can fling myself over and use the Golden Pack-a-Punch, such a cool addition to the map. If you didn't know, the Golden Pack-a-Punch upgrades your weapon five times for only 5,000 points. And I do absolutely love the Pack a punch camo on this map. You do have to survive on this little island for a little bit and I nearly went down before getting flinged back to this ship. Now that I have the tundra gun I can camp on the bridge
bridge and zombies will only come from this singular window which is kind of stupid but hey at least it makes round 100 really fast so you probably guessed by now i do get the hellion and just spam rockets into the poor zombies basically resulting in me spawn trapping the zombies and to do the ultra mega spawn trap you place the ragnaroks down with the level 3 upgrade and completely decimate the zombies this is another strategy on black ops 4 that is kind of brain dead but i'll admit it's kind of fun because it's bloody fast and easy and when you've played as much zombies as me this kind of map can be nice for a change but it is definitely not great to make tag even easier they added dogs as well so that is how i got round 100 on tag to tone the fastest map on black ops 4 and maybe the easiest although classified may give it a run for its money i got 26,000 kills and it took only two hours and 40 minutes so that is how i got round 100 on every black ops 4 zombies map it only took me 10 days to complete. When comparing this to Black Ops 1 and Black Ops 2, which took me a month each, you can really see the difference in difficulty. Also, World at War Zombies took me about three months. So yeah, Black Ops 4 is very easy, but all in all, I had a lot of fun making this video. And so hopefully you guys did enjoy.